Hi everybody, this is Sean here from the Sci-Fi Model Guy, and I want to thank you for joining me on this first video of my adventure into sharing my passion for modeling. It's my hope that we all learn something, myself included. Uh, I am by no means the best modeler on the planet, and I know that there are plenty of options out there for you to choose from. Uh, I, I will name a few in the videos uh, coming up, and I do appreciate that you're taking a little time to to watch this and and learn with me. So I, from the bottom of my heart, I thank each and every one of you for the time that you're going to put in, whether it's for the whole video or for for a few minutes. So with that being said, uh, this is the first uh, video of the channel, and we are going to be building the USS Enterprise 1650 scale. And here's a little bit of a preview of it. This is going to be lit. Uh, we're going to all the details as much as possible, some hints and tricks, and and even some some pratfalls that I that I had along the way, and that is going to be evident in this first video where we had a part that just wasn't right. So, um, with that being said, I will recap that at the end of this video. This is going to be one of the few times that you're going to be actually seeing my face on on camera. I'm going to be tend to be top down stuff and you don't want to see this. So with that, again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, enjoy the video and please uh, feel free to make a comment, ask questions, uh, leave some feedback, any constructive criticism you ha may have. And with that, on with the show. Let's get modeling. How's it going everybody? Sean here from Sci-Fi Modeling Guy and we're going to kick off this channel with an oldie but a goodie. This is a 1650 scale USS Enterprise from AMT. Uh, it's a 50th anniversary edition model. It's been out for quite a while and this is actually a reproduction from the model that they had back in the day. So let's slide this cover off. It's actually a pretty nice uh, little cover here. On the ones I've built, I've actually saved these. Um, so we're here looking at this box and you can see right away we've got some old school boxing, old school graphics, and um, this is going to be a lot of fun. I do believe they they did uh, clean up some of the the techniques and using modern methods but it's really nice to see they went ahead and use this this classic uh, design here so one thing we're going to do with this model we're not just building this we're going to light this sucker uh, she's about I think 15 inches long maybe 18 uh, I built a few of these guys um, so lighting's going to be a bit of a challenge it's kind of a a small cramped space in there but uh, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do uh, something that some of you you uh, people that really appreciate Canon may not <laughs> agree with this but we're gonna light this uh, put some blue lighting and then the cells here and red lights in, in the uh, Boussard collection collectors in the in the front um, it's not strictly Canon but it's gonna look really really cool and for people that want to light the model that don't want to do that obviously skip that part but uh, we're going to do it we're just going to have a little fun with this um light the nacelles some light the impulse engines and the rest will just do standard lighting um so anyway i'm going to open this uh this kit up here and unbox it and we'll take a look at the pieces okay uh we are now unbox this thing here. We've got the trusty number 11 X-Acto knife and we're gonna just make sure we don't want to cut this box up too much. The recipient of this model may decide to keep it so it's always a good idea to keep these things intact. Uh, there may be some spare parts, some spare decals, instructions. Uh, anyway, I mean I always keep these boxes. If you're a any any fan of modeling, probably some fellow fellow models modelers out there have quite a few boxes tucked away. If I, I showed you this garage, you'd be surprised. So here we go. We're gonna, and here we are. We're seeing this uh, as we go here. Now some of these some of these kits here have a little bit better alignment than others, but that's why we have putty. So we'll find out. First thing we're gonna do is just 
just unbox this, this bad boy. And I will say the one, one of the things that kind of disappoints me about this kit is the flash that they leave on here. You can see this plastic on it. Um, Obviously, these things were probably on, on a larger mold and broken up and placed in here. Uh, the AMT could do a much better job. This this here, a lot of times these things just break off, but this is actually pretty thick stuff. Um, and in a couple other kits I built, see if I'm bending that, already you can see it's going to be a little chunk coming out of the saucer. Nothing we can't fix. Uh, nothing we can't handle, nothing we're not used to. But it would be nice if, if they do decide to redo this kit. It'd be nice if AFT would clean that up, but we'll work with it. So that's obviously the upper saucer section, lower saucer section here. Got the, the base. Um, we're, we're just gonna be using this base here. We're not gonna uh, build anything custom, although a lot of people might choose to do that. We're not really focusing on that right now so we're gonna go with the base these work just fine we just got to get a hollow tube uh, to replace this solid one here for the wiring that's going to go down drill a hole for the switches and the power uh, and and we'll be good we'll go over all that as, as we go along and then we've got the various different pieces really actually very simple models not that not that many pieces here uh, so this is actually a good one to beginner uh, for a beginner lighting project, even though it does get a bit cramped in there. It's not too many lights that we're going to end up using. Uh, it's pretty simple, and uh, it, it'll uh, it'll teach you. It's nothing nothing you can't handle. It might be scary for a beginner if you haven't lit a model before, but we're going to get it done. Um, I'm not sure if the camera can pick this up but there are window slots carved in here it's really kind of hard to tell with a camera but they're, they're uh raised little little bumps to let us know where the uh the windows are for this and what we're going to be doing here guys we are going to be creating masks we're just going to be getting our regular masking tape and cutting out little tiny rectangles here to mask these windows and we're going to put that on over all the windows we want to light and what that's going to do is when we prime it and paint it that mask will prevent any paint from getting on here and when we peel it off the light should show right through and we'll give you a little demonstration with with a flashlight here and when you put the flashlight underneath you can see the light does shine through pretty nicely and pretty white, actually. So even though it's a, a gray model, gray color plastic, uh, we're going to get a nice, nice light coming through here uh, just by not painting it. Um, so we're not going to have to drill holes in there. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of people use a little drill pin vices and their Dremels and all that, which is fine. Uh, but the only thing with those is drills are round. Uh, these windows are rectangles, so unless you want to drill tiny little holes and spend a lot of time filing, um, actually just letting the light shine through the plastic is, is is really the best way to go. The hardest thing you have to do is just worry about masking. So uh, I'm going to get all this um, opened, laid out, and then we'll be right back. All right, everybody, we're back. We're opened up and everything is spread out here. Uh, couple things we just want to go over here is the instructions uh, and as you can see uh, it's two pages <laughs> we've got uh, assembly of the saucer the main hole or the secondary hole rather and then uh, then the cells engines and deflector dish super super simple this is a such a basic basic uh, model and uh, it's really good for beginners and decal placement is actually maybe a little more complex than than the instructions to put it together. There's some uh, directions if you like the decals for the pilot version, uh, second pilot, or the mirror universe. Uh, it's got some nice decals for that. And uh, speaking of decals, you have a really, really good decals with this kit. Uh, it's very, very impressive. They're very clean based on the builds I've done. Uh, here's the the general starship 
uh, decals. And one of the things that AMT has done is they've included a sticker version of the decals with it. Uh, there, there's a secondary sheet uh, like this. It's also stickers. Um, it gives you the option of using any of the various names for the Constitution class ships that were in the show uh, with their registry numbers. Really nice touch. I, I one day maybe build the whole fleet. <laughs> Who knows? It might be might be pretty fun if we can get some some uh, space uh, painting here up at the top of the garage with some nice strings and and uh, power going to it. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, but it's really nice if someone doesn't just want to use the Enterprise. Um, but uh, so here the stickers. We'll put those away. Decals and. Um, and, he, and here it is. So uh, I'll lay down as we were talking about before. There's uh, quite a bit of flash on here. Uh, a lot of it you can break off. Uh, you can try to use your exacto knife. Um, you might want to use your your nippers to get it off. There's various ways to do this. Uh, I'm actually going to give something a shot. And one of the things on this channel that we're aiming to do is learning. So. Um, although I've built some some kits of this using my nippers and sanding files to clean this up um, I'll do that on this one here just to kind of demonstrate if you want to use nippers to do it so we got that off but if you can see here make sure the camera can catch that uh, there's a little bit of rough edges there it's it, it's a little bit discolored there's a chunk out of there it's not very smooth and again we will putty this over and fix any seam work but it's just a shame that that we have to do that on there so one of the things we're going to try with this is using the dremel tool now you may not have a dremel tool you don't need a dremel tool uh, i happen to have one i like using it and if you do get into the hobby you might find uh, it's worth it to get one and i'll be using the cutting disc and we'll try to cut off some of these and see how that works. It might, it might turn out to work just great. Um, but if you don't have one, no problem. Use your nippers, use your sanding file. You can use the X-Acto knife to kind of scrape some stuff off here. No problem. Everything's fixable with putty and some sandpaper. So we're gonna get this cleaned up here. Um, gonna give the, uh, get it cleaned up. We're going to bring the Dremel out here. We're gonna give it a shot and we're gonna see how it works live. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back and uh, we've got everything laid out here. We've got our Dremel, Dremel tool with our cutting disc attached, uh, the all important safety glasses and our piece that we're gonna be cutting with. Um, do wanna point out, very, very important if you use a Dremel, cannot say to enough safety, safety, safety. Uh, wear some sort of eye protection. Uh, this little guy here is pretty powerful. Um, not only can it really slice up your hand uh, pretty good. Uh, this wasn't from the Dremel, but it, it can do it. Uh, it can, this thing's really dangerous, but when you do these things, little pieces of plastic will fly off. You might even see one come up and hit the camera here. So uh, eye protection is a must. Um, really need that. So if you're not wearing uh, eyeglasses, definitely invest in some sort of these guys here. I'm gonna put them on and uh, so again, uh, as we stated, this is gonna be an experiment here for me. Some of you uh, may have already tried this and I may fail, <laughs> may fail utterly. Uh, but again, learning is the, the, the true focus of this channel. So let's give it a shot. We're gonna try this on low. Um, the cutting disc is good. We've used it for uh, cutting out channels and stuff. Used it in modeling before, but never to cut flash off. Uh, so we're gonna put it on We'll give it a just the lowest setting here to see what happens and we'll give it a we'll start with these little guys up here and just see what happens. Seems to be going okay. Might get a better view from this side here. And one thing you want to do when you when you do this, this stuff does, this Dremel tool tends to kind of melt the plastic. So you want to take this in little chunks, little small bits at a time. 
Make sure it's not melting plastic back onto the model. And we'll come through and clean this up with the sandpaper after. Now here's a true test right here, this big bit. That came off pretty easy. We're just gonna Always remember, you can always take off more, but you can never put it back. It's like with cooking, adding salt, or anything else like that. Once you once you put it in or take it away, it's kind of hard to put the toothpaste back in the tube. Okay, so we'll need the sandpaper. That you know, here's a nice big piece right here. Let's see what happens. Hit it from the other side. If you see here, I'm trying not to stay too close to the curve of the saucer here. I'm trying to dig away a little bit away from it and then we'll chip back away when we get closer. Turn it up a little bit. Yeah, this is a big, big piece of flash here. Always, uh, when you're doing something like this, you want to flip it around and look at both sides. Make sure you're hitting it from the right, right angle. As you cut, the dynamics of the model are going to change a little bit. Now you can see here I've melted this. It's a little gooey. This thing's going at pretty fast RPM. There we go. Now we're just going to clean this up a little. Actually, we're going to turn this down. We don't want to melt the thing away. It almost sounds like the uh, the whales from Star Trek IV. And I won't undignify myself by doing an impression. Okay, not so bad. Maybe a little piece of flash here. Not bad. Okay, I'm going to finish cleaning up these three. And uh, we'll be right back. Alright everyone. Um, the Dremel, Dremel tool turned out to be okay. You can kind of see some chunky bits here. We're going to sand that down, of course. And uh, that's the nature of this, this model kit. Uh, always end up a little bit of chunky things, but if you have a little patience, uh, a little creativity, uh, you can get these things knocked out. Uh, so the goal here on this with using the Dremel was was try to get a better job than I had done before, and, and and we'll see. We still need to clean this up with some sandpaper. So we're going to take the other half of the saucer section, and we're going to get that cleaned up as well. I'm going to still use this Dremel tool uh, and see how it does, but... Before we do that, I will go ahead and I will go ahead, let me see, pick one of these to do with the traditional nipper method. And I think this one here would be a good example. 
So we just want to try to use the nippers and go along the curve of the saucer as best that we can. Hit it from the other side. And you can see there it left that white mark that we'd seen before that which we can sand down but when you put the saucer together you will see this this will show we get a quick quick alignment here so we can maybe demonstrate this idea come on no bother why are you doing that to me There we go. And you can see right there, that's where we nicked it off. And that the nippers always seem to just dig a little bit in there. Um, and of course, there's a seam here that we got to get puttied up. Some less than perfect connections there. And uh, this would be a problem, will be a problem actually when we do light this. You'll see these little gaps in there a lot more because of light leaking. We will get to that. When we get to that, uh, this may be the first time you've seen a kit being lit. Um, so you guys are going to learn all about light blocking and the fun, and I say that sarcastically, <laughs> the fun adventure of finding light leaks when you think you've taken care of them all. Because we can guarantee even the most advanced modeler can get a model together and discover a light leak. Uh, yeah, they're frustrating, but it's part of the hobby. So uh, the goal, I guess, is to reduce those as mu much as you can and uh, get good at fixing them because they're going to happen. So, okay, I'm going to clean these up a little bit with the Dremel. We'll be back and uh, we'll do some sanding and then move on to the next step. And we are back and we're ready to do a little bit of sanding here now. I've got uh, several pieces laid out here going from more abrasive down to uh, less. And um, I'm not sure on the number of all these. This feels like it might be about a 600 grit and then 800,000. Uh, this is a 2,000 or 1,200 uh, grit. Very, very smooth. Um, you, could, you could barely even scuff up your hand with it. And then uh, this might be a 2000 foam. Um, basically, uh, if you haven't sanded before, you want to start with a little bit more coarse and work your way down, um, depending on on the, the model. Now, uh, before we go any further, one of the things we are going to do, uh, a tip we picked up from uh, Boyd over at Trekworks, is... Um, scuffing these models up before you prime and paint them uh, and usually we do that with a double aught uh, steel wool and I haven't done that yet to these uh, basically you do you take one of these and you just go around and scuff these things up and uh, it does leave a little residue there you may want to wear some gloves when you do this and then when it's done you just rinse them off with a warm water maybe a little dish soap to get any of the grease or uh, things that were left on when they manufactured the item and that helps you make sure you get a nice uh, solid uh, bond between the paint primer and and the model kit so a little little tip there we'll, we'll go back over that later um, but for now uh, we're going to try to get these things sanded down uh, here with with this so what we're going to do this time we're going to give it a try we're going to take the saucer section kind of just assemble it Just assemble it together like that so it's not moving anywhere and we're gonna get our friendly masking tape um, can't have enough of this here uh, I've got a various sizes between this size and real thick and very thin depending on the use but we're using just this to hold the model together and um, put that in a couple spots here make sure we're not putting it over where I want to sand we'll just do it in three areas and by the way uh, tape far better than clamps if you're wanting to hold something together for gluing far better so there's where we clipped it before it's where we need to sand 
And we'll just put one more here for good measure. And the only reason we're doing this here is I want to make sure that we're sanding, uh, sanding this thing down to where it's going to be flush with with the saucer. Now, um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but but this thing does bleed over a little bit. Uh, it's debating on whether or not you want to really make that flush all the way around or not. Uh, in my experience, it's best just choose what you want. Depends on the kit. Uh, some some kits it fits very very nicely and there's not much bleed over, but uh, it does tend to kind of hang over a bit in the front of the saucer. So if you want to spend a lot of time and sanding that down, uh, have at it. Uh, it couldn't hurt. Uh, the only thing to be careful is you don't want to sand over these two guys here um, or any of the window ports, which I don't know if you can see pick up. There's one here, the window port, window port. And uh, there's some others around here that's kind of hard to see with this light. There's some rectangle windows, some more round ones. So if you're going to sand this thing flush, just make sure you're not sanding over where these guides are for the windows. That would be the only the only advice here. So we're gonna we're gonna do a little bit of sanding here. So we're gonna start with our thicker grip grit and go where there's where we can really feel this. Where we can really really feel the bumps there. So another thing too, everybody, is when you're sanding this, this also can melt the plastic so if you go too fast or too long you, you can actually melt this stuff and make it sticky and gooey and makes it very difficult to work with yeah so i think we're going to go on this kit we're just going to sand over we're going to sand over this lip here and make it nice and flush we're building this for a friend so, Mike, if you're out there watching this, you get to see your model being built there, buddy. You can still feel it. And again, you could use your Dremel to do this. I tend not to. This is more of a feel. You want to take it a little bit more slow. The Dremel's kind of a permanent thing, and if you cough or sneeze, well, you can really take a chunk out and be in for a world of world of hurt there. It's coming down pretty nicely. You can still feel that seam though, but we want to get this thing just perfect. This is a pretty thick grit paper, so it's coming off pretty good. We'll go through at the end and sand and smooth it down as we go. So uh, we're going to take a pause here and be back and see how she finishes up. Be right back. Hey everyone, a little quick note here. So as I'm going through and sanding this thing down, uh, I decided to separate the saucer section and give it a good sand from this side, from, from the inside looking in. And uh, what I've noticed, I'm seeing a little bit of anomalies here on the curve. Uh, made it a little easier actually to see this so I just want to show you this real quick so I'm kind of coming up around like that and then back down so up and down up and down and in this kind of a fast motion and this is helping getting rid of some of the extra flash and little things that that I had missed with the Dremel or didn't get too perfectly with the Dremel. So now that I'm doing this, it's really feeling nice and smooth. And uh, I'm gonna be going back and forth, like quick, so up and down like that. And I'm just going through, cleaning that up real quick. And if you come up across a, a thick piece or a thick paint, you can always use your X-Acto knife if you've got a nice sharp blade on there. Uh, this is a number 11 exacto knife and you can you can really easily carve pieces out um, with this I don't want to go too deep with it but you can see how it's real easy and if you can almost scrape it off like that like it's a lathe uh, I think that's the tool 
the aim for wood, uh, and just slowly kind of peel off bits. Uh, and that works fine, um, but you can go through a lot of blades that way. So I'm going to finish this up here. You're going to feel a lot of rough edges. So we're going to do the same technique up and down just around here real quick. I'll just leave the camera rolling so we can see this at work. And don't worry about scuffing the model with uh, the sandpaper. Again, we're going to be doing that with that double lot steel wool. And you are not going to notice this after you paint it. Even if, whether you use an airbrush or spray paint, uh, we use airbrushes here for most uh, most things. But the spray paint's perfectly fine. Now, right here, I don't know if the camera's picking this up. Got a pretty good lip there. So, this is actually going to be one of those things where we use the X Acto knife. I'm just going to slowly. Just kind of pick away at this. Never want to be in a rush doing this. Because if you are, you will take off a lot more than you intended to. And I can see here there's some window ports here. So we want to be very careful and not scuff this up. Because the windows are obviously going to be where people are looking. And if you have a bad seam and a bad connection, you can uh, take away a little bit from, from your piece. So we're just doing this little bit of the, the little scraping method. You can see it here building up on the blade. Get a little air that's a lot better so we're going to continue with the sandpaper now put away our exacto knife and we're going to keep going around here and checking for other big bits we might have missed with the dremel Just the prep work. Yeah, some nasty bits there. And, and always remember to rotate these things around, everybody. Uh, you don't want to just look at anything from one angle. You're going to look at it from multiple angles. And try to get it as perfect as you can. And you can fix mistakes. Many ways to fix mistakes here. Yeah. A lot of people, I think, don't get into modeling because of the patience involved, or you think you can screw it up, or they may have had a uh, model kit as a kid and didn't really know what they were doing, or didn't have anyone to teach them. And, you end up with a glue bomb and they just say forget it I'm not getting into this but patience is definitely uh, something you learn doing this hobby so if you don't have patience no better way to learn than modeling and maybe golf you need to be an exercise in patience to be sure. All right, this all feels pretty good. So let's give us a test fit and then we'll see how, how the lip is doing, especially the front of that saucer section. Nice fit. Let me get this tape here that we had before and secure this 
together and then we're gonna feel it and yeah looks uh, you can you can see things you can see little little bumps and little areas where you need to sand by looking at it but best practice here and I, oh, I can see one right there look at that that's gonna need some work um, best thing to do here is actually feel um, so I'm going to put my hand here. I'm not even looking at it. I'm just kind of feeling around. I can feel a bit of a lip here. I can feel a bit of a lip there. Yeah, a lot of sanding to do. Uh, this kit, uh, again, this is for Mike. We want, we want Mike to be happy. So we are going to get this one as near perfect as we can. And if, you, if you're doing yours for the first time, if you have uh, the patience to do this, uh, all, the, all the power to you. Uh, if you don't, you want to move on, uh, you want to get, get it as best as you can. Um, we have putty. You, you don't have to have this flush. Again, the saucer kind of pokes out a little bit from the, from the bottom portion. You don't have to have that flush if you don't want it. This is... Uh, me being picky with this thing. I want it to be good for him. Um, and I'm giving it as a gift. But if you're doing it for yourself, um, have at it. it just, just, the main thing is to have fun. Uh, it, when, when you stop having fun, that's when you need to stop doing the hobby. Or put it down and come back to it. So yeah, that's going to take some, some sand in there. Okay, uh, we're going to do a little bit of work and a little elbow grease here. We will be back, and I'll let you know how long it took. All right, we're back. We spent actually only about five minutes here doing this. Uh, ended up getting out some 120 grit uh, disc <laughs> from my orbital sander that uh, that I use that that kind of took off some of this this overhang. It took care of it pretty quickly too. I might add, might have been better to use 220 grit, but um, it's pretty rough here. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna take some work our way down here and just give give this old guy girl sorry give this old lady a, a smooth sanding all the way around just to clean up any of this roughness that we caused. And feeling it here again. I'm not looking at it. I'm just closing my eyes. Um, it's nice and smooth, and it will continue to get more smooth as we work our way down in or up in grit. The higher the grit number, the smoother the sandpaper is. And here, there, you can see a, a nice seam uh, that we cause uh, have that will be taken care of with putty. You're gonna see a seam. Uh, the the putty uh, is there to smooth that but the goal here is to get at least so it's flush so that the putty can go on and you just smooth it out with your fingers it's a great product again pick that up from boyd picked a lot of stuff up from boyd over at trackworks so you guys need to go check him out uh, real great long form videos really in depth some pretty pretty advanced stuff but he does a great job of explaining everything and uh, it's a great great channel does cars he does uh, a lot of track on space 1999 uh, you name it you name the sci-fi genre he's he's do, he does it uh, we concentrate on track and Star Wars here uh, not to say we won't get into other other properties, but right now we're doing Star Trek. All right, this might seem a little a little slow to y'all, but uh, it's getting there. It's nice and smooth, uh, nice and flushed. It's gonna it's gonna turn out good. I'm really glad here that I took this extra time to take care of that little overhang lip. In the other kits I've built, I haven't really worried about it so much. But um, trying to trying to learn, trying to expand, trying to make each project I do a little better than the last. And as long as you learn something from each project, then it's good. 
So even if you're just starting out, uh, keep those old ones around. You know, don't don't throw them away. Uh, they're a great reminder of where you've improved. You can see your latest work compared to your beginning and see the improvements or you can see some things you may have done better in the past and now you skip over. So uh, keep it, keep them around. All right, got the battery plugged in there and uh, came out really nice, nice and flush. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be it's gonna be good for old Mikey. Okay, we're gonna put that aside, and now we're gonna talk about the old secondary hull and the warp nacelles here. Um, these guys here, they just break off. We'll be uh, sanding and putting, puttying these guys later on. As we do, we get the. I almost got in a rush right there. See, I mean, you can do a million of these things and always catch yourself doing a rush. So now here's some areas there always need to be sanded. Right there. Right there. Not a big deal. Can actually take our exacto knife we'll clean this one up a little bit with that and uh, for this area here um, there's a there's a decal that goes over here so if you get a, a little bit of a seam or a little bit of a nook in there we can putty that over cover it and there's like a nice the red pennant uh, decal goes right here over this part so if you, if you scuff on on it uh, that's okay it's an advantage of doing a few of these kits you you learn where you can kind of not worry about something and worry about and other areas where you do have to spend some time so here I'm just using this again using the old blade as kind of a lathe to Slowly get that off. This is a great technique also, everyone. So when you when you do need to go and glue these things together, uh, you want to make sure that there's no paint where you're gluing. Uh, so any any time where you're going to be, you know you're going to be gluing something together, for, um, it's uh, you got to keep the paint off of it. Uh, and, and on this kit, great area that to talk about is right here at the top of the the neck. Uh, this part goes in to the saucer. It goes right there. So when you decide to paint these or when you're ready to paint these, you want to take a little bit of tape and just cover up this little hole and and cut and wrap around these guys so that when you're done with your priming and painting, if you decide to paint before you assemble, which we'll, we'll get to that, um, where if you can keep the paint primer off of where you're going to be contacting with glue, all the better uh, for for the times you do need to clean it up for instance you're gonna get some in here when you glue the saucer on this old exacto knife does great you just you just scrape like that lightly takes the paint right off so where were we <laughs> we are uh, that's right we are unsprewing the the other pieces here Again, I try not to, um, oh, here, here's one thing I almost did. I almost threw this here away, and I don't need it. Um, be careful before you throw anything away. Uh, if you haven't done a kit before, I've done a bunch of these. Like I said, three or four of them by now. Um, you know what you can throw away, but a lot of times I've, I've thrown something away, and it turns out there's a piece on there. And uh, I'm sure anyone who's built a model that's watching this can relate to that. I'm accidentally throwing away a tiny little, a little piece you needed, especially if you're doing a model airplane, a missile or a fuel tank or a little tiny, tiny little nug that you thought uh, <laughs> was nothing and it turned out to be something. Got a little bit of flash here and uh, we're just going to scrape that away. Just a little sandpaper. 
same technique as before. We're going to go up and down. Now the only unfortunate thing with this kit is that this secondary hull does not have very good contact points that hold this part in. So what I mean is you take these two halves of this upper part. Most models have like a little male and a female uh, sprues inside there that kind of lock together that give you a place to glue it and stuff. This kit, for whatever reason, doesn't. So you you can fiddle with this thing and you get it just right and then it just flops, or, flops away from you and it's frustrating. <laughs> so, so what we like to do here, just test fit these things. And I'm fiddling with this on camera just to show you. Now they do go good together, but there's a seam here that uh, always seems to be a problem when you're putting this together. You gotta get some good putty work and then hopefully this thing doesn't start pulling apart and causing your putty work to fracture. So it's really important to get this really, really good and together again, because there's nothing in here that's holding these two bits together other than whatever glue you have in between it. So that's always, always an adventure. But if we get this lined up just right, and one of the things we notice here, if the camera's picking it up right here, the tail end, this piece is a little longer than this one. And it might be just a design flaw because it feels flush right here. It's definitely flush right here, these, these two bits. It's a little longer there. So little things like this, when you're test fitting all these things, everybody, make sure you're keeping an eye out for, for little imperfections on there. Uh, you're going to find them. And you're going to have to deal with them. So I'm just test fitting this thing some more. You can never do this too much. Again, yeah. So it definitely is going to need a little bit of shaving down. We'll we'll uh, handle that at the time comes. So it's just making a mental note of that, and then um, sometimes you get one that's a little lopsided, like this. Oh my goodness, this <laughs> this piece sure is lopsided. All the heck and gone. So I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to stand up here so I can see the camera more. But this is something. This might even need uh, some heat work to remelt it or even buy another kit. But this is, this is horrible. I don't know if it's picking it up on the camera, but it is one of the most lopsided things I've ever seen. My goodness. Oh, man, I've not seen anything like this before in my days. Discovering things anew. All right, so I'm going to do a little research to find out what I can do. Might be able to use the hair dryer, kind of melt this a little bit, or get it malleable and, and fix it. But uh, if we're continuing on on this path, this would not have not have worked. Okay, we'll be back. Hey there, this is Sean back with you. And I want to thank you, first of all, for lasting this long. If you have made it this far into the video, I truly appreciate it. Uh, I will tend not to do videos this long. Uh, 15 to 30 minutes is going to be about the goal. That being said, I do know that modeling videos, I've watched many, many of them, and they do tend to run long. So if, if you're looking for very short videos, I will try. Uh, I'm going to try to do some shorts and do some little tutorials here and there, little quickies, and um, we'll see how it goes. But again, I want to thank you. Uh, this is my first video. I, I do tend to, to blab quite a bit, as, as I'm doing right here, uh, but I do appreciate your time. Uh, I just want to close this video out by saying the bottom half of the secondary hull there that we were showing you, uh, I just could not fix it. The warp was too 
too bad. I think I talk about it in subsequent segments, but uh, in case I don't, I just want to explain kind of what happened there. So uh, it wasn't fixable by me. I'm, it might be, uh, but I held on to the piece, so maybe we'll do something with it. But for the purpose of this project and the fact that it is for a, a friend of mine, uh, I want us to be nice. So I just went ahead and ordered another kit, and I haven't yet contacted uh, AMT or Round 2 about it. Uh, I'm still debating whether or not to. It's not really a complaint. These things happen with models. It just does. So um, with that being said, again, I want to thank you real, truly for watching this video. And I hope to put out a lot more. I've got more segments of the ship coming. Uh, as you can see, uh, it is complete. So we did finish the the model. I'm not going to show the the lighting yet, though. That's you're going to have to wait for that that little treat. But uh, uh, there, there's a, a funny little thing that happens down the line with that as well. Uh, but all in all, I'm happy and. Uh, I am super excited about the stand that I'm building for this. Uh, the person that I'm making this for isn't aware of it. It's kind of a surprise. Uh, I've been taking pictures of it. I'm not video documenting it because it's a little bit of woodwork and stuff like that. So, um, But it's going to be really cool. Uh, I'm really happy with the results so far, and I cannot wait to show you all. Uh, so with that said, I will be signing off here. Look for another video in a few days. And with that, please leave a like and a comment in this video if you if you would be so kind. And if you have any questions, comments, feedback, criticisms, I uh, hate you, Sean, <laughs> whatever, uh, requests for, for future models, uh, please uh, drop it in the comment. I've got a whole bunch of, of kits waiting to build, uh, but I'm always looking to buy more. As if you're into modeling, you'll know that you've got a you've probably got a stack of of kits waiting, and you're always happy to buy a new one. So please, uh, any requests or anything, drop me a line. This is uh, this is going to be a fun adventure for me. I thank you again for being uh, on this journey with me, and we'll see you down the road. Thanks.